Hey everyone, my name is Mario Martinez and this is Amateur EMS. So today we're going to be working on some more EKG practice tests. To learn more about these types of rhythms, if you're getting confused at all, check out the EKG playlist. We have a lot of foundational videos that will be really useful to catch you up to speed. Also, if you like, check out the Discord. We have the link down below in the description and we'd love to have you guys there. Any input you want to put in for future videos is always welcomed. But with that being said, I'm going to give you guys 15 seconds to interpret this rhythm. Then afterwards, we're going to talk about it together, okay? Okay, so if we remember with our EKG rules of interpretation, one of the first things that we want to do is we want to look at the P waves, right? So we can see we have multiple P waves in this strip right here, or between this R wave and this R wave. So we have more than one P wave. We can see that the P wave is upright, which is good. The PR interval with this P wave is less than 0.2 seconds, so we're happy about that. But we have more than one P wave, right? So automatically we're thinking, okay, this is potentially a heart block. Another thing that we want to do is we want to look at the QRS complex. It's less than 0.12 seconds because it's less than three mini boxes. So it's nice and tight. We like to see that. And we also can see our T wave which every, with every beat here. So if we look, we have our P waves. They match up with each other. The P waves match with the P waves, which looks good. You can see it's kind of getting lost within the T wave. And I'm sure if this strip was any longer, we might also see it getting lost in the QRS complex. Our QRS complexes are matching up with each other. But our P waves and our QS complexes aren't matching up with each other. So at this point, you should think, okay, this is a third degree heart block. Now I'll give you another 15 seconds for this rhythm. Okay, so if we look at this rhythm, we can see we have our P wave. There's only one P wave. This is a T wave right here, and it's upright, so that's good. There's only one. We look, can look at our QRS complex, and we can note, hey, it's less than 0.12 seconds because it's less than three little white boxes, so that's also good. But if you look, our PR interval looks like it's bigger than 0.2 seconds, or one big red box. So if we see right about, I would pick this rhythm right, or this beat right here, and if you measure right here at the beginning of the P wave, we can see that it's going to be about one and a half, almost two boxes worth, which is greater than 0.2 seconds. It's about 0.32 seconds or so, maybe even 0.36 seconds. So the PR interval is greater than 0.2 seconds. So that would lead us to think that this is a first degree heart block. Okay, this is our next rhythm, and I'm going to go ahead and give you 15 seconds. Okay, and so for this rhythm, we can see that we can identify where a P wave is, right? Are these all P waves? Who knows? In all actuality, this is a QRS complex, right? And it's, it's about 0.12 seconds, a little bit greater maybe. But the important thing is that we just have the monomorphic V-fib, right? Where we have one type of style, or we just have these ventricles that are beating off nonstop. So they're kind of like almost vibrating or gyrating. The same thing with atrial fibrillation. And this rhythm is just complete nonsense, right? So this is actually one of our shockable rhythms. Of course, we're always going to check for a pulse too. But this is a rhythm that we can actually consider defibrillating. So we're going to move on to the next rhythm. So go ahead and take a look at this rhythm, and we're going to go over it in 15 seconds. Okay, so if we look at this rhythm, we can see that we have one P wave with every QRS complex. So it looks like it's going to be less than 0.2 seconds, so that's good. It's upright, so we're very happy about that. H, uh, there's only one P wave for every QRS complex. You can see here that this is the T wave. Our QRS complexes are less than 0.12 seconds. And if we look here, we can even measure it as one red box, two red box, so two and a half boxes. So if you remember our box method video, if we're trying to figure out the rate, if it's either a sinus rhythm or sinus tachycardia, we would take the magic number 300 and divide it by, if we're saying it's two and a half boxes, let's say 2.5 boxes, maybe even 2.6. And that's going to give us a heart rate approximately at 120 beats per minute. But the important thing is that this indicates that they have no pulse. So what type of rhythm would this be then? It would be 
PEA or pulseless electrical activity where the heart electrically is working properly, but mechanically it's not compressing properly. So this would actually be considered PEA. You have to watch out for this. Sometimes it will be tested on rhythms that will look completely normal, but you have to look for the fine text that says with no pulse. Here's another rhythm and I'm going to go ahead and give you guys 15 seconds. Okay, so if we look, we can't really identify a P wave here, right? We can obviously see where the T wave is. We can see where the QRS complex is, but we don't know where the P wave is. If we look at our QRS complex, we can see that it's less than 0.12 seconds. It's nice and tight. So we're thinking, okay, this is like a flattened P wave. So this may actually be a junctional rhythm. So what we need to do next whenever we have, we have identified that it's a junctional rhythm, so we need to say, okay, is it a junctional rhythm? Is it an accelerated junctional ry rhythm? Or is it a junctional tachycardic rhythm. So we're going to go ahead and find the beat that matches closest to a line. So right here looks really good. And we're going to count the boxes. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6.1, 6.2. I'll say that it's uh, 6.2. So we're going to take 300 divided by 6.2. And that's going to give us a heart rate at 48 beat per minute. So that's going to fall under a junctional rhythm, also known as a junctional escape rhythm. Right here is our next rhythm. We're going to go ahead and give you guys 15 seconds, and then we're going to talk about it. Okay, so if we look right here, we can identify P waves, so we can think, all right, well, maybe is this a junctional rhythm? Well, if we look, we can also see the ventricles right here. And we can see that the QRS complex is about two boxes worth, right? So it's about 0.4 seconds. So because of that, we have this wide QRS complex. We can think, okay, this is probably an idioventricular rhythm. And then if we look at our waves here, and we go right here, we go over to, let's say, right here, we can measure one box, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, about 8.6 boxes worth. So if we take 300 divided by 8.6, that's going to give us a heart rate at approximately 34, 35 beats per minute. Because of that, it can help us identify whether it's an idioventricular rhythm or an accelerated idioventricular rhythm, with an idioventricular rhythm being between 20 to 40 beats per minute. So that falls under that. So this is an idioventricular rhythm. Here's our next rhythm. I'll give you guys 15 seconds. Okay, and if we take a look at this, we can see we have our P waves here, our T waves here, we have our QRS complex here, there's only one P wave, so that's really good. We can look at it and our PR interval is less than 0.2 seconds or less than one big red box, so we're happy about that. Our QRS complex is less than 0.12 seconds, or basically it's less than three white boxes, so looks really good. There's only one P wave for every QRS complex. Our P waves match with our P waves. Our QRS complexes match with our QRS complexes. Our P waves match with our QRS complexes. So we're going to think that this is a sinus rhythm. Now, what type of sinus rhythm is it? Is it a sinus rhythm, sinus bradycardia, tachycardia? We're going to have to use the box method. So this one looks really good where the R wave is right next to where the spike is, or where the red line is. So if we look here, it's one box, two boxes. Okay, we can take 300 divided by 2. That's at a heart rate of 150. So this is right on the line of being between a sinus tachycardic rhythm or the beginning of SVT or supraventricular tachycardia. So we're going to go ahead and say that this, for this instance, is a sinus tachycardic rhythm. This next one, I'm going to go ahead and give you guys 15 seconds. Okay, and if we look here, we can see that there's potentially a bunch of P waves, but almost at the same time, there's no like complete P wave, right? We have this weird jittering kind of almost like fibrillation, right? Or fibrillating movement. We can see here that we have our QRS complexes. So there's more than one P wave. They are upright, so that's good. However, we can see that the PR interval looks good on some of them. Some of them it doesn't, but we only want to measure the first one anyway. So the PR interval, it kind of doesn't really matter too much in this rhythm. We can look at our QRS complexes and we can see that the P waves 
don't really match up with the P waves. It's just kind of an irregular rhythm. But also our QRS complexes are also spaced out as well. So it's an irregularly irregular rhythm. And so whenever you have a rhythm like this, you would think that it's atrial fibrillation or AFib. So this is the end of the video, everyone. Thank you guys so much for watching. Tell me how you did in the comments below. I'd really like to know if you got them all. So if you did like this type of content and if you want more, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. It helps the channel a ton and it shows me that you want to see more of this type of content. But with that being said, everyone, I will see you on the next one. See ya.